Hey, welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Huynh Tuet Dao, and I'm speaking with... Andrea Falcone. And we're currently in Denver for 360 Anda, where we're both speaking. Andrea, where are you based, and how did you get started in Android? Cool. Uh, I'm based in Boston, so on the other coast. <laughs> um, and I got started in Android sort of uh, because Android happened. Uh, I've been a mobile, <laughs> mobile developer since 2006. Um, Android wasn't a thing. Uh, yeah. So I started working in BlackBerry and uh, iPhone came out, Android came out and they're like, we need to support more platforms. You're a mobile developer, you know Java, so make some Android stuff. That makes sense. Mobile, Java, Android? Yeah. So yeah. I got suckered into it. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> well, we're really glad that you got suckered into it and glad to have you uh, here. Uh, and you actually work for, well, what used to be Crashlytics, yeah. uh, but is now Fabric. That's true. Actually, I just saw a tweet that you posted where you just celebrated your like five year crash anniversary. Crash anniversary. Yeah. Oh, I like that. And you were like employee number seven so, or something like yeah. that too. I, I know at work we use Crashlytics, and I think every project I've ever worked on uh, we've used Crashlytics. So <laughs> Crashlytics and now Fabric have been like a big part of it. I know my development life. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, and you've actually gone through a couple of different acquisitions yep. in in a short yeah. or long five years. Yeah. So you were first acquired by... Yeah, so I, we were Crashlytics. We were a startup on our own in Cambridge. And we were acquired by Twitter mm -hmm. um, in 2013. Mm -hmm. And then we built Fabric. So we built more developer tools around Crashlytics. We built answers. Yeah, we made the platform bigger. Mm -hmm. um, and then in January of this year, uh, we, the Fabric team, was acquired from Twitter by Google. Um, and so now we're building Fabric and Fastlane and yes. Crashlytics. Fastlane. Yeah, I'm wearing Google. my swag. Gotta wear my swag. <laughs> um, but at Google, I think it's pretty amazing too. And, and you pretty much have kept your team, your mm -hmm. original team together. That's and I, I think that's really amazing. I think that that sometimes when you hear about acquisition stories, you know, some of them, you know, yeah. uh, things get changed up. But I think it's really fabulous that y'all have stayed together yeah. as a team. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's um, an amazing team. Uh, it's mostly about the people. Like I love what we work on. I love the product, but. I also love the people probably more than anything else. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Hey, team. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the product that um, I wanted to talk to you about yeah. today is again Fastlane. Can you, Andrea, tell us uh, what it is? Sure. So Fastlane is a series of tools that are open source that allow Android and iOS developers to smoothly automate the release of their apps. It's a lot of different things. Uh, the tagline is sort of hard to. Hard to get into one sentence because it comes to so many parts of the app release process, but those are the key the key parts. Automation, open source, Android and iOS. How do you integrate Fastlane kind of into your like development projects? So on the Android side, um, we've got a couple of different parts that are specific to Android, but overall Fastlane is a Ruby gem, or, or we have an installer that you can use. Um, and there's all kinds of command line bits and pieces. So you can literally type Fastlane init, and it's going to set itself up. It's going to set you up with the files that you need, um, which are called fast files. They're sort of a, a Ruby DSL, so you can look at it and understand what it's doing, but it can be parsed by the program. Um, and yeah, you, you type Fastlane in it, you type screen grab in it, you type supply in it. You're like, do it for me, please, so mm -hmm. I don't have to do the work. Um, so can you script like end-to-end -end or like automate end-to-end? -end? Yeah, uh, we have uh, some customers that want to use it for white labeling, so they want to set up new apps on a mm -hmm. regular basis, and they automate the automation. Whoa, Whoa. <laughs> Autom automateception <laughs> yeah. or something like that. Yeah. And I think what's also really fascinating about Fast Fastlane is it's also open source. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think like, I remember uh, we talked about it last year and you actually are kind of like managing and, and kind of, because I, mean, I feel like a lot of us, you know, either want to kind of approach open source or participate and maybe do PR through open source, but you actually are like managing the project yeah. and kind of overseeing it. How's that been? It's been great. It's something new, totally new for me. I've worked in closed source uh, for my entire history. Um, and so to you know, be part of a community, to learn that it's not just me that is responsible for the code. There's hundreds. There are, I think there's some like 600 contributors to this wow, project. Yeah. There are literally hundreds of people around the world who work on this thing with me. Um, so that's been, been crazy. Um, the volume of open PRs and issues is something that like, I've had to learn to, to wrangle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't. I don't necessarily want to sit on a huge pile of bugs. Um, that feels bad. Mm -hmm. But it all, it's also a huge signal that people are interested. People are using this, um, and so it's you've got to strike this balance. And for every project, it's it's really different. But where is the sweet spot for like? It's okay to have a hundred open issues. If it was 
you know, something closed source and you're like, I have a hundred budge. You're right. Like freaking out. Yeah. It's like, no, there's a hundred opportunities for people to get involved with this project. Oh, wow. That's, that's like thinking about <laughs> it in a totally different yeah. way. Like, yeah, exactly how you were saying between closed source and open source. So what's the process for, I mean, obviously because it's still kind of a product that, mm-hmm. you know, Fabric or Crashlytics and now Google is working <laughs> on. Um, you know, obviously there's like a, like a kind of, it seems like there's like a balance between the stuff that you do as a product team and the stuff that you kind of leave open for open source. Like, do you have like a triage process yeah. or like a, like internally, or is it kind of with the community? Like, how's that work? Yeah, it's in conjunction with the community. Um, we have core contributors who are um, external people who have commit access. So the majority of those 600 people are people who submit a PR and we decide yes or no, we merge it. And then there's another group of under 10 external folks who are not employees um, who also have commit access. So they can say that someone else's code is good enough for the project. Oh, cool. And we worked with those, we call them core contributors. We worked with them to come up with a um, agreement about what this product should be or what this tool should be. Um, it should focus on mobile. It should be about, um, you know, de- deploy and build of apps and not stray from that. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially with iOS, you get towards tvOS and macOS and suddenly you're doing desktop development. Right, no, Um, absolutely. And on Android, you know, similar thing. You start going like Android things and IoT and you're like, is that mobile app development? Mm -hmm. You know, let's focus on this. And so we've got sort of a a mantra or an agreement that it should be focused on mobile app development. Um, And is it around the app deploy process. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, if it's something, you know, out of that realm, um, we built a plug-in system. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's really cool. So it lets people contribute without sort of us holding the the reins. They can build something that everyone else can use. Um, They can get access to it. Um, But maybe it's outside of the the bounds, but they found a, a place where they think it fits. So they can let other people use it. Oh, you have like the, so you have the best of both worlds. You have your, your core kind of like functionality and your core kind of like vision, I guess, yeah. that that you all on the team have. Yeah. But then you still leave room for people to play around and do cool things. Yes. That yeah. is awesome. I yeah. like that. Best of both worlds. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's awesome. So um, if people wanted to either learn more about Fastlane as a product or Fastlane as a open source project, yeah. uh, where can they find out about it? Cool. On GitHub, uh, github.com slash Fastlane or docs.fastlane.tools. A um, couple of different ways for you to get up and running with the, the project. So honestly, how, how many nights have you spent up late, like looking at like PRs and trying to figure out like uh, <laughs> like reviewing PRs? Um, I try not to stay up too late. Uh, a couple of couple of kids <laughs> try to balance the um, the the work life thing um, mm-hmm. because you are working outside of um, you know what might be a day job or working with people around the world, and we have people who are contributing to this outside of their work time too. Um, you know. Sometimes at 11 o'clock at night, I'll be, you know, working with with folks. um, But because I have a passion for it, um, I could have been watching TV, but I, you know, I found a bug I really wanted to fix or um, a PR I really wanted to merge. Um, So it happens, but I try not to. Um, Awesome. Well, work-life balance is really important. And definitely, if you are interested in Fastlane or interested in seeing how you can automate your build and deploy process, definitely check Fastlane out. Um, Especially if you're interested in contributing to a cool project, um, definitely go over to Fastlane. Thank you so much, Andrea. Yeah. I love, love, love more Android support. Um, It got started as an iOS tool, and we want to sort of beef up more of um, the Android community. And so um, please, please join us and help us um, you know best what app developers want. So. Absolutely. Android, got to represent. Thanks so much, Andrea. <laughs> and if people wanted to find you on the internet, how can they do that? Yeah, uh, pretty much everywhere. I've got the same handle. It's at a S Falcone, uh, Twitter, uh, GitHub, all the, the places. Awesome. Well, thank yeah. you so much. And thank you all. And we'll see you later. Bye. Okay, cool. All right. Hey, welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Huynh Dett Dao, and I just said my name wrong. (laughs) Sorry, Mom. (laughs) 